right, call your next witness, please. Deanna Jarrett. Can you raise your hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. Okay, can I see? Can you state your name and spell it? It's Deanna Jarrett, D-E-A-N-N-A-J-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. And Ms. Jarrett, how are you employed? I'm a senior investigator assigned to the Special Victims Unit with the Cherokee County District Attorney's Office. Right. And what does it mean to be an investigator with the district attorney's office? Um, we actually, we gather um, all the things involved in an investigation. We uh, request and gather the reports, the videos, uh, 911 calls. So basically we just gather everything, medical records, and we compile that um, to assist in the prosecution of the case. Okay. Um, are you a post-certified police officer? I am. And um, how long have you been employed with the district attorney's office? I've been with the district attorney's office for 14 years. All right. And prior to that, how were you employed? I was started my career in 2000, uh, 2002 with the Cherokee County Sheriff's Office. All right. And then I left there in 2010 and came to the district attorney's office. Okay. And um, in terms of the function of your role as a post-certified investigator with the district attorney's office, um, what does that look like in terms of working together with the investigating agency, like in this case, Canton Police Department, once they make an arrest, how does that sort of impact your role and how you interact with that agency? So we are here to assist um, the law enforcement agencies uh, during or after the arrest. Uh, we further investigate because once they make the arrest, they still investigate the case, but there's some things that they can't do that we are able to further investigate, uh, such as reviewing, um, in this case, uh, cell phone extractions um, and listening to jail calls and things like that. We have a good relationship with our local law enforcement officers, and they um, usually involve us on the front end, which is very helpful to the investigation and prosecution of the case. Okay. How long have you been involved in this case? Uh, since the incident date of December the 8th of 2020. Okay, and um, what was your involvement in that case in, on December the 8th? So the Special Victims Unit was created um, in October of 2020, and I was assigned as the investigator to the unit. Um, oftentimes, law enforcement will reach out to us with certain cases, um, and they reached out to us in this case, and so uh, members of our office traveled to the Camp Police Department uh, on the incident date. On December the 8th? Yes. Okay. And what was happening at the police department um, when you went there on December the 8th? Um, they were conducting the interviews. All parties were um, brought to the Camp Police Department for in interviews um, to further the investigation. Okay. Did you participate in those interviews or just observe? I just observed those uh, interviews. Okay. Um, and have you been consistently assigned as the investigator on this case with the district attorney's office since that date? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you mentioned that sort of one of your responsibilities as an investigator with the district attorney's office is um, to review the evidence that gets provided, including cell phone extractions. Um, did you do that in this case? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you, we talked about um, Ms. Driver's cell phone in State's Exhibit 115. Um, as part of your work on this case, did you receive the complete cell phone extraction from that device? Yes, ma'am, I did. I uh, collected those from the Camp Police Department, their evidence department. Okay, and um, we heard testimony from Lindsay Harris, the digital forensics um, it, expert who extracted that device. But when you are going through the device, are you familiar with what's known as the UFED reader? Yes, ma'am. And what is that? Um, so the UFED reader, um, it actually allows us to um, open uh, the cell phone extraction itself and we're able to view the items within the cell phone. Um, it actually allows us to uh, search for certain terms uh, and create reports uh, like searched items, uh, text messages. We can narrow down the search and pull and create reports. Okay. Um, and so when you were starting sort of your analysis and and generating of smaller reports from, from that device. I think we previously heard there was an 84,000 page report generated at one point by Ms. Harris. But um, as it relates to narrowing it to a more relevant scope to the, the allegations in this case, um, did you have a sort of a starting point for what you were looking at? I did, so in Detective Cruz's report, um, 
Part of my job is also to review all the reports, and in reviewing those, she had completed a search, and she notated in her report that she had searched the cell phones, and she had located uh, some terms that were searched in the phone. So what I did is I took the phone, and I further searched those items and pulled the reports. Because Detective Cruz, she did not pull the reports, but she did notate that she uh, observed those items within the phone. Okay, and when you use the term pull the reports, are you meaning generate like a smaller report with specific criteria pulled from the phone? Yes, it's, okay. it forms a PDF, um, a viewable PDF form. Okay, um, I'm going to hand you These are the reports that I generated um, using the UFED reader, um, using key terms. Okay. Um, and do these truly and accurately reflect condensed data that you pulled from the phone extraction from Chloe Driver's device here, States 115? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Your Honor, at this time I would tender States 128 through 132. No objection. All right. 128 through 132 are admitted. Published States Exhibit 128. Go ahead. All right, What are we looking at here? So this is an extraction report um, that I generated, and so the searched item was uh, kill. Um, and so this is the report that the UFED reader generated. Okay, so you were able to go into that UFED reader, do a search term for the word kill, and these were the things that populated? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so in item number one, you s uh, the left column where they're numbered, um, what was the term searched on her phone? Killing somebody to save them. Okay, and what was the date of that? Uh, November the 25th of 2020. Okay. And then in two and three, we see um, the same search terms? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and then in line four, what was searched? Killing because the world is fake. All right. And this is a one-page report that you generated with eight searched items. Um, was that all of the information that related to the word kill? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, as far as the searched items, yes, ma'am. Okay, you said as far as the searched items. Are there different places in the phone or categories of content you can go look in? There are. On the left-hand side, when you're, when you're doing, um, or you're searching the phone, there are different uh, categories that you can search within. You can search within text messages. You can search within web history, or web searches, and you can also search in searched items. So this was inside the searched items in the phone. Okay, so um, you narrowed the word kill in the things that have been searched on that phone. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna publish States Exhibit 129. What are we looking at in States Exhibit 129? Um, this is an extraction um, from the cell phone. Neck was the key term used. Um, this is something also um, that Detective Cruz had notated in her report, so that's why I searched for neck. Okay, and um, in line item one, um, what do we see was searched and on what date? How to snap a neck, and that was on December the 2nd of 2020. Okay, and had that same term been searched on prior dates? Yes, also on November the 30th of 2020. Okay. And then I'd like to go to publish dates exhibit 130. And tell 
told the jury um, how is this web history report in States Exhibit 130 different from the searched items report we just looked at? Um, so like I explained earlier, this was the search within the web history rather than the searched items. So I put in the keyword neck inside the web history to search for that. Okay. Um, and does this show um, in, in line one, um, is, is that a Google search? It is. And what did she search? It's how to snap a neck. Okay, and what was the date of that? Uh, that was December the 2nd of 2020. Okay, and then in web history, does it also show websites that are visited? Yes, it does. Okay, so in line two, um, what was the sort of website that was visited in relation to the term search term neck? It's the www.quora.com. Um, and it's, it returned how hard is it to kill someone by twisting their neck. And then it says movies make it look really easy. How much force would be needed okay. was, as a question. All right. And what was the date of that? That was December the 2nd of 2020. Okay. And then item three, is that a similar web page? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And then items four and five, is that the same Quora website you already referenced? It is, it appears the date is different. Okay, that was visited on multiple dates? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let me go back to the first one. We have the first one being December the 2nd in line item two? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then in line item three? Uh, December the 1st, 2020. Okay, and item four? Uh, December the 1st, 2020. And item five? Uh, it is November the 30th of 2020. Okay, and item six? Uh, November the 30th of 2020. Okay. As and well as seven. Item seven is, um, what is that? Um, that is a Google search. Okay, uh, an, another Google search of how to snap a head. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And item eight. Uh, November the 30th of 2020, how to snap a neck. Okay. And then what are these at the bottom? Um, these appear to be links to Walmart. I'm not sure, maybe um, the word neck may be embedded. In the item number? In the or item. Okay. Or it might have been, a, a, yes it is embedded, I see it. Um, it could be an item related um, to a neck. Okay. And then um, those were specific to a key term. Are you also able in going through the UFED reader of the larger phone extraction to narrow um, searched items based upon a particular date range? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and were you asked to generate a report of all searches on her device for a particular date range? Yes, ma'am. And what was the date range that you generated? I believe that was November the 1st of 2020 to the incident date of December the 8th of 2020. Okay, so in States Exhibit 131, that's already been admitted, we have a 61 page report. Is this everything that she, her searched terms between November 1st of 2020 till the incident date of December 8th? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And does this larger report contain the searched items, um, killing someone to save them, um, killing someone because the world is fake, are they contained in this larger search term report? Yes, ma'am. Okay. November 1st of 2020 to yep. December the 8th. And um, in States Exhibit 61, which is the um, all the search terms, um, were there search terms in there that um, indicated Miss Driver might be looking to travel in any way? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, there were searches uh, about a bus ticket, uh, traveling with a child. Um, I don't know if child was the actual term. It might have been baby. Mm -hmm. um, or it may have had her age, but. Okay.
States Exhibit 131. And on page 51, starting with item number, search item 547, um, what was she, she, she searching? Uh, 547 was 12 tribes, community, single, woman with baby. Okay, and what was the date of that? That was November the 22nd of 2020. Okay, um, and then um, item 551, what was she searching? What does the Bible say about having more than one wife. Okay. And um, in item 557, can God forgive me for being married with a being with a married man? Excuse me. Okay. And in item 561, can God forgive me for harming my husband? Were you asked to generate a report um, specifically with regard to um, anything involving CBD? Yes, ma'am, I was. Okay. I'm going to publish States Exhibit 132. All right. And um, this is uh, indicates it's searched items, so these things that would have been searched on Ms. Driver's device? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And starting with item number one, what was searched and on what date? Does CBD work first time? And that was on September the 12th of 2020. Okay, and item number two? Uh, does CBD work first time? Uh, September the 12th, 2020. Okay, and three? Does CBD help with anger issues? September the 12th, 2020. All right, and item four? Uh, does CBD help with anger issues? September 12th, 2020. Okay, item five? Breastfeeding with CBD oil experience, uh, September the 8th of 2020. Okay, and number six. Breastfeeding with CBD oil experience, September 8th of 2020. Okay, and are the next several the same date and same search term? Yes, they are. Okay. Looks up here. Yes. And then the item 10. CBD oil and therapy for mental illness. Okay, and um, do you know why that doesn't populate with a date in this extraction report? I'm not sure exactly. Um, it could be, uh, um, it's my understanding it could be various reasons. Maybe the reader didn't import it over. Um, could have been something that was deleted. I'm not sure exactly. Okay. Um, and then the item searched after that? Um, how long is CBD in breast milk? Okay, and number 12. Does CBD help with depression? Okay, and then finally number 13. Uh, breastfed baby on CBD. Um, with regard to the CBD in this case, I think we asked Mr. Spillers yesterday, seats 87, um, are you familiar with this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And this um, small container, um, where was this located? That was in the diaper bag. Okay. And was that the diaper bag that we saw in the scene photos next to Ms. Driver? Yes, ma'am. Where Ms. Driver and the baby were? Okay. And um, did you at any time request for any testing to be conducted on that? Yes, I did. Okay, and who did you request that of? Um, I contacted the Cherokee Multi-Agency Narcotics Squad and uh, Agent McNeely uh, came over to conduct a field test of the substance. Okay, and um, what did you ask him to test it for? Um, we wanted to find out what the substance was. Uh, it was suspected to be CBD, but we wanted to, to have it tested. Okay, um, and did he test it? He did conduct the test. Um, we're stipulating to this, right? Yes. Your Honor, we've, we've stipulated to the admissibility of States Exhibit 133, which I would tender at this time. All right. All right. Um, and 
publishing states 133. What did that substance test positive for? Uh, it field tested positive for CBD. Okay. Um, and was your request of him to just test it for whatever substance it was? Yes, the field test, um, they test for multiple substances, um, but it returned positive for CBD only. Okay. And that was part of the narcotic squad that did that for you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I want to speak to you about um, sort of your role as an investigator taking this case over post-arrest. Are you aware of when Chloe Driver was arrested and booked into the jail? Yes, that was on December the 22nd of 2020. Okay. And were you already working on this case and assigned to this case at that time? Yes, ma'am, I was. And is part of your role at the district attorney's office um, to monitor um, phone communications of any inmates? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, did you do that with regard to Ms. Driver? Yes, I did. And when did you become aware of, well, let me back up. How does the phone system in the Cherokee County Detention Center work? So they use a system called Fusion. Um, and so when someone comes in, when they're arrested, they come through booking. Um, and there are phones inside the booking area where they can call out. These phones are recorded, um, but they are they're at no cost. Um, once a, it's determined that a person is not uh, being released um, for various reasons, what they'll do is they'll be placed in a different location. Uh, there are other phones throughout the jail um, at the Adult Detention Center, and those phones require um, a code. It's like a, a four-digit code that is assigned to um, each inmate and that allows them to call out. So the Fusion system uh, allows us to go in and search calls underneath the inmate's name. We could also search by number. Okay. You indicated that the booking phones, when people first enter and are booked in, that those are not linked to anybody's account? They are not. You don't, they don't require the PIN. Um, that's not until they're in population. Okay. So anybody can call from those phones and it's not searchable by an inmate's name? That is correct. Okay. Um, and when did you become aware of, of the first phone calls um, of Ms. Driver that were linked to an account associated with Ms. Driver? So periodically I would be checking the, the calls under her account uh, and on December the, tw uh, excuse me, on February the 22nd, um, I was able to locate a, a phone number for her, or a phone number that she had called. Um, and uh, in listening to that, she had called the actual call was made on the 18th, so four days prior. Okay. And um, so on the 22nd, you located a phone call she had made on what date? Uh, February the 18th of 2021. Okay. So February the 18th of 2021 um, is the first phone call that you detected on her own account? Yes. And are you familiar with who she was calling? Um, yes. I did not recognize the number, uh, but I did recognize the voice. And I was able to determine that that was uh, Ben Yaman Ben Michael. Okay. And what was the date of that call? Uh, that call was on February. The first one that I located was February the 18th of 2021. Okay. And in monitoring her phone communication with Mr. Ben Michael on that February 18th, 2021 call, um, did you do anything when, once you identified that phone number? You said you weren't familiar with the phone number, but you were familiar with the voice. How are you familiar with his voice? He is the next of kin in this case, so our office makes contact with uh, the next of kin to the victims, and we had done that um, on occasion. Okay. Um, and after you identified that phone number being associated with him um, and a call from her account, what did you do next? I then went in and searched the number, which is another option that we can do. Um, so I located additional uh, phone calls that were made to that number that were not associated with her name. So they were like in the booking area. Okay. Um, and so when you got a phone number that you could search, you, you saw that there were additional calls made from the booking area that, that weren't associated with her PIN? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And did you listen to those calls? I did listen to those calls. And were those calls between Chloe Driver and Ben Yaman and Ben Michael? Yes, they were. And the phone calls that you listened to from the booking area, what were the, the dates of those phone calls? 
Uh, the very first call to that phone number was on February the 8th of 2021. Of 2021, okay. Mm -hmm. And in listening to the phone calls from, so from everything you looked at from, from that phone number that you identified as being associated with Mr. Ben Michael, um, was the first phone number you could locate, first phone call you could locate between the two of them February 8th of 2021? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When you listened to those phone calls from booking, did you develop any concerns? I did. So she was having a conversation with him, and during that conversation, it appeared that she had been using, been contacting him on another uh, line. Um, during that conversation, she referenced uh, a work phone, uh, which led me to believe that maybe she was using another phone within another area of the jail that was not recorded or monitored. Okay, um, and, and on that February 8th, 2021 call, um, you indicated already that was the first recorded one you could find. Was it apparent from their communication that they had had other communication since she'd been in custody? It was clear that they had been communicating. Okay, and what was it that made you believe she may be communicating with him on an unrecorded or unmonitored line? There were additional calls that she also made um, on February the 13th of 2021, and so the, the conversation that she had on the 8th and then um, on the, the other dates, um, she was talking about being allowed to talk on the phone um, for an hour or so, and she would talk about how staff would step away, um, and it appeared that that was when she was able to utilize that phone to call uh, Benyamin Ben Michael. Okay, um, and did you alert the jail to your concerns at that point when you discovered that? I did. I sent, uh, communicated with the sheriff's office uh, on February the 22nd uh, of 2021. Okay. And what was the result of that? Um, it's my understanding that uh, the number was blocked um, and she was not, and her privileges were, uh, were taken away. Okay, her privilege is to use an unmonitored line? An unmonitored line. Okay, and what was your understanding of why she was permitted to use an unmonitored line? Uh, it was my understanding that a doctor uh, requested that she be allowed to contact her mom and her attorney on the unmonitored line, um, and only those two. And then it was approved by the jail staff that she be able to do that. Okay, and when you informed them that she was utilizing that unmonitored phone time to contact Ben Yaman Ben Michael, those privileges were taken away? That is my understanding. Okay. Um, after that occurred, you indicated that number was blocked. What was that phone number that you first found her contacting with, being in contact with him on? May I look at my notes? Yes, of course. Okay. The first number was 840. And how many calls did she make to him on that phone number? There were par uh, 33 calls to that number. Okay. And what was the date range of those calls? February the 8th of 2021 to February the 22nd of 2021, which I believe the call was, the number was blocked and there were no additional calls to that number at that time. Okay. So in a two week period, she made 33 calls to that number? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then um, after you contacted the jail and they blocked that number, what does it mean to have a number blocked? What is the significance of that in terms of whether it can be called? So a number's blocked throughout the facility. Um, they're able to go in and block a number from being called anywhere within the facility. So, so just understand that you, you probably already know that no one can call into the jail. Um, no one can call in. So the inmates have to call out. That's the only communication as far as calls go. Okay. And as it relates to the monitored accounts, do they have to put in their pin that associates that call with them? With them? They do as long as they're in, in populated or not in the booking area. Okay. Um, and apart from that phone number, um, were you able to identify a second phone number that Ms. Driver was utilizing to contact Mr. Benyamin? Yes, yes I was. Okay, and what was the second number you identified her contacting him on? And how many phone calls did she place to him on that phone number? Uh, there were five calls. Okay. And what was the date range of those calls? 
That was February the 8th of 2021 to February 23rd of 2021. Okay. And um, did you locate any other phone numbers that she was communicating with him on? Yes, I did. Okay, and what were those? Uh, there are three others. Um, 757-392-6370. As it relates to this case, is that number phone number significant or relate to any parties in this case? It does. Um, that number is Jessica Kavigians. Okay. The other wife of Benyamin? Yes. Okay. Is that the same phone number that she called 911 from in this it case? It is. It's also the same number that she provided to law enforcement. Okay. And um, how many phone calls did Ms. Driver place to Ms. Kafigan's phone number to speak to Mr. Binyamin? Uh, seven. Okay. And what was the date range of those phone calls? Uh, March 30th of 2021 to March 31st of 2021. Okay. And did you locate any other phone numbers that she had utilized to contact him? Yes, I did. All right. And um, what was that? Two zero. Um, and what might the reason be for an inmate to utilize different numbers to reach someone um, after a number has been blocked? Well, they're still trying to make contact with that person, so they utilize different numbers to reach out to them. Do you know how many numbers of Mr. Binyam in the jail blocked? I believe there were two okay. uh, that I was aware of. Okay. Um, and as it relates to, what is the last phone number you told us? Uh, two. Does that phone number come back to anybody associated in this case? Sarah Stiles. Right. And is that the phone number she utilized to call 911 in this case? Yes, it is, as well as provided to law enforcement. All right. And how many phone calls did Ms. Driver make to Mr. Binyamin on that phone? Uh, 54. Okay. And how, what was the date range of those calls? Uh, April the 5th of 2022 to April the 14th of 2022. Okay, so in a nine day period, she made 54 calls to him? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and were those 54 calls during that nine day period made on her account? No, they were not. Whose account were they made on? Brinley Peppers. Okay, was that another inmate? Yes. And in your experience, why would someone use another inmate's pen to communicate with someone? Uh, to avoid detection. When you would go into the system and search calls made by Chloe Driver, would these phone numbers made to Benyam and Ben Michael under Brindley Pepper's account, would those populate? No, they would not. They would just come up under Brindley's, uh, Brindley Pepper's name. Okay. Um, and were you able to um, locate any calls made to Benyam and Ben Michael from any other numbers? Yes. To any other numbers? Yes, ma'am. And what was that number? Four seven. And um, how many phone calls were made by Ms. Driver to that phone number to Mr. Benyam and Ben Michael? 518. Okay. And what was the date range of those 518 phone calls? April the 20th of 2022 to February the 5th of 2023. Okay. So um, from from the first phone call to him being February the 8th of 2021, when was the last phone call to him? February 5th of 2023. So about approximately two years after Hannah died? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what was the total number of phone calls that she placed to him in that two-year period? 617. Okay. And in the, um, the last phone number, um, where there were 518 calls that she placed to him, how many different inmates' accounts did she use to accomplish those phone calls? Six different inmates. Were any of them her? No, ma'am. Okay. And um, you testified that the 617 phone calls that were made by her out to Benyamin was between February 21 and February of 23. Are you aware of the dates in which Ms. Driver was evaluated by mental health experts in this case? Yes, ma'am. And what were the dates of her evaluations by those doctors? 
Dr. Ballard conducted the evaluations on March the 29th of 2021 and June the 12th of 2021. Dr. Garrett conducted two evaluations, the first on August the 11th of 2022 and the second on September the 2nd of 2022. Okay. And after um, all of those evaluations by Dr. Garrett and Dr. Battler, did Ms. Driver continue to reach out to Mr. Binyamin and communicate with him after those evaluations had occurred? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to ask you some questions about the Cellbrite report in total, and then we'll whittle it down to the actual reports you did, okay? Yes, and then ma'am. we'll talk about some of the jail calls. Um, one, one of the things I want to ask you first and foremost, were you asked as part of this case to do any of these extraction reports with respect to Ben Yaman Ben Michael's phone? No. Okay. Um, so... You agree with me that there were three cell phone extraction reports done in this case, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, and you received all three of those full extractions, correct? Yes, ma'am. And the only one that you were asked to pull search terms or run through was uh, Chloe Drivers, correct? Yes, ma'am. I did review the other phones, but I did not um, pull any reports. any reports or you didn't conduct any um, searches on Mr. Ben Michael's phone about mental health or treatment or anything like that. You did. No, ma'am, I didn't. Okay, know. all right. Um, and the same with Sarah's, correct? That's correct. Yes, all right. Um, and part of those reports um, that you that come is contained in those reports. I mean, we're talking with Chloe's. I think it was what eighty-four thousand pages. A little over eighty-four thousand. And yes, ma'am. that report is broken down into sections, correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. And so you can go through that report and you know look at. The text messages, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, any Facebook messenger that's associated with that phone or that's been logged into on that phone, correct? Yes, ma'am. Any of their search history, yes, their ma'am. cell phone call log, correct? Yes, ma'am. Voicemails, to a degree. To, yes, ma'am. Based on storage of the phone. Yes, ma'am. Um, and contacts. Yes, um, including like locations of, you know, when they've used the Apple Maps or whatever. All of that is contained in that report, correct? Yes, ma'am. There, there are some things that don't import over for various reasons, but yes, ma'am, you're correct. And it includes stuff that's even been deleted, correct? Sometimes, yes, ma'am. So it's never really permanently deleted in some, in some aspects. It, it shows on the report, at least, if the item had been deleted, if it pulls it in the report, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. It also conclu- includes all the, you know, images that they generated with their camera, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, any images they may have downloaded from the internet, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. And videos as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And one of those, thi- one of those reports that um, is generated is the what we call the installed applications one. Is that Accurate? Yes, ma'am. All right, so I'm going to show you, and I'm not tendering it as an exhibit because it's already been admitted, pages 4,014, 4,015, and 4,016 of Ms. Yes. Can I the witness? Yes. Um, with respect to each one that I gave you, each uh, notation, can you tell me what applications were installed and what date those were? Or do you want me to highlight it a little bit for you? Um, tape a call? Yes, the first one is called 
take a call. Okay, and what date was that installed? Purchase date was uh, December the 1st of 2020. Okay, and what about number two? My second line, calls and texts. Uh, that was November the 5th of 2020. Okay, and then number three? Easy Voice Recorder. Um, that's November, or excuse me, that's October the 24th of 2020. Okay, so even if you, when you purchase those and install them, it shows up, it generates a report based in that cell right later, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. And there's lots of apps that are installed and deleted generally in this, in when you review all of those, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. The um, other part about this is that there were other searches done by Ms. Driver that you were not necessarily asked to search for, correct? Like other, she searched for a lot of things. This, her. I did go through the phone and I reviewed it, but there are not reports that I generated for every search that I conducted. Okay. So you would agree with me that if it was generated as in the overall picture that it was included some, it was an accurate reflection of what other topics she may have searched for? Yes, ma'am. All right, so if, it, if she searched for things about how to make muffins with vegetables and chickpeas, you have no reason to disagree with that? That's or, correct. Um, bake casserole for a one-year-old? Yes, ma'am. So not all of her searches were related to anything related to mental health or the event that we're here for today. That, is that a fair assessment? No, that's correct. Okay. Um, there's also searches in here about things about parenting, correct? There is, yes ma'am. There's, uh, there's one about failing at sleep training for a one-year-old in September of 2020. Do you recall seeing any of those? Not that one, but okay. I agree. But agree if it's yes, in the report that it yes. is what it is. Okay. Um, also ones about, you know, conditions of the child, like hives or doing some sort of research to take care of the child. I do recall that one, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, she also did searches um, in, in September 2020 related to her baby's specific age and milestones. Do you recall that? Yes, ma'am. Um, about walking, um, sleep training, all of those kind of things. Yes, ma'am. All right, and she also did searches about specific types of food. She was, it seemed that she was trying to figure out what she could feed her child or other things you would agree with me with respect to that. Yes, ma'am. All right, um, and again, she did other searches about and related to the care of her child. You'd agree with me on that, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. You would also agree that some of that web history and searches included um, trying to search on how to obtain a birth certificate, correct? Yes. All right, um, and part of that included, and that was around November 25th of 2020. Would you agree with me on that? I don't recall the date, but that sounds correct, okay. yes ma'am. Um, and those were searches that were done, um, and well, you had knowledge about this case with um, from being on it since the beginning, correct? Yes ma'am. And you knew that there were at least contained within law enforcement's reports that they had sought out information to establish um, Hannah's um, birth record, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, and you understand, or you would agree with me that part of this whole scenario was is that one of the reasons we had to establish parentage and stuff was because there wasn't a formal birth certificate or anything else issued. That's correct. Okay. So, around November 25th of 2020, you would agree with me that these searches indicate that she was looking for how to obtain a, a birth certificate. Yeah, that's correct. All right, and that was, and some of them included deciding a year later to get a baby a birth certificate. Yes, ma'am. And um, variations of that. She kind of seemed to word it uh, different ways. Yes, ma'am. Um, do you recall her also in looking for how to travel with a baby without that birth certificate? I do. And uh, how to obtain you know, proper documents for her daughter, like a passport and, and other things around that same time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Part of the um, Cellbrite report also in includes, um, you get emails, correct? You can see emails that are sent to the associated email address with that phone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and those are all truncated, you know, you know, smaller than what the full message tends to be, but you can see who it came from, 
the date and time, correct? Yes, ma'am. And, you know, kind of the subject and a little bit of the body, correct? That is correct. All right. So you would agree with me that if there are certain emails that I'm about to reference with you that are generated from that particular report, you'd have no reason to dispute that they existed, correct? That's correct. All right. So, yes. All right, so um, December 8th, 2020, you would, uh, this is item number four on page 3898 of the Selbright Report um, with the subject line of why did the narcissist pick me from a English at Quora.com. I think you already talked about Quora, that that was part of some of the searches you generated. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you'd have no reason to dispute that that was something that might have been in our inbox at that particular time. That's correct. Do you have any familiarity with Quora and how that works? I do not. Okay, so uh, typically it, it may be one of those sites where you ask a question and then get an email response. So if it was something that said like a reply to, you'd have no reason to dispute that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, same with a, a email on December 7th from the same Quora.com specifically directed to her um, subject more related to I've realized that I'm a bad person. What can I do about it? Again, no, no reason to dispute that. No, ma'am. Um, same with a subject line from December 6th. Do narcissists think, know that they've lost a loved one? No reason to dispute that. No, ma'am. I know it seems tedious, but we have, we have to do it. Um, on November 28th, 2020, this is page 3916 of the Selbright Report. How can I cure a paranoid thought that everybody is against me, plotting against me? Same position? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you recall seeing any emails in there, uh, in there regarding the um, Christian, the Children of Christ Trust in the SBA applications or anything else like that? Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay. And so there were some references on the pages 3970, 3971. Um, 3974 regarding the establishment of their or when they were applying for that loan that kind of thing you yes, recall seeing those though I do yes ma'am okay one of the um, other items that you generated with respect to this particular case um, was a report for, or you did a search about a bus ticket for a 13 month old. Do you recall that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that was generated by you putting in that particular search in the Cellbrite Reader and establishing a report, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, and that search, um, based on your um, extraction or your running of that report, that was a search that was conducted on December the 8th of 2020. Would it help you if I showed you the report? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. May I approach? Yes. I'm going to show her what I'm going to mark as dependent 17. <coughs> so you would agree with me that on December the 8th, 2020 at 12.23 p.m. that she had conducted that search for a bus ticket for a 13-month-old? Yes, ma'am. All right. At this time, I would move to tender that. Is this um, the defense 17? Any objection, Ms. Groffer? No objections. All right. Some of the it's other reports, I know you're... It's, it's uh, admitted. Some, <laughs> some of the other reports that you entered for, or talked about already was CBD, about the CBD, correct? Yes, ma'am. And those searches began in September, around September 12th of 2020, correct? Yes, ma'am. Around the same time that the, the individuals involved in this case seemed to indicate that Ms. Driver had started utilizing CBD, correct? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. And, and some of those searches included um, her concern or seemed to indicate a concern about breastfeeding while using that substance, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. And, and there was also a search in that particular time frame that, that she did specifically asking, like, how long is it in breast milk? Do you recall that? 
If, it's, on, if it's item number 11, you have no dispute about that? No dispute, yes, ma'am. All right. And that one of the other searches, which is item number 10 in that uh, state's exhibit, that CBD oil and therapy for mental illness, no dispute about that, correct? That's correct. All right. With regard to this, the searches that you ran about killing or snapping a neck, um, you didn't find any in those entries or anything about any specifics related to her searching on how to kill a baby, correct? I did not. Okay. Um, didn't have any idea of, of what who she was looking or talking about at that particular time? No, ma'am, that's correct. Did you run any searches um, indicating that uh, regarding suicide or anything else like that? Do you recall? I don't recall. I may have searched the phone, but I don't. I did not pull any reports okay. or create any reports. All right. To make this easier for you, I'm going to give you back states 131 so we can walk through this one. Okay. Thank you. All right, so the first um, item that search, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, so these reports kind of actually run backwards, meaning it's the closest in time date, right, all the way to the end date of when you started the search. So the first part of this search started December, technically ended on December 8th, but it's the first part of the report, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So when we look at it, we have to kind of look at it like we're reading it backwards. Yes, ma'am. All right, so let's go. Um, Go back to, if you will, go to page 59, if you don't mind, and look at uh, items 655 and 656, and if you wouldn't mind reading the dates and times and what the searches were, please. Okay, 655 is November the 11th of 2020. And the search is mental institutions, Knoxville, Tennessee, or okay. Knoxville TN. All right. And that was, it looks like, done two different searches on this, just a little bit of time apart, a couple of seconds maybe? One second. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So we are now going to go to page 57. And let's look at 627, 628, and 629, please. Okay, these are made on November the 17th of 2020. Uh, and the whole world is waiting on me to heal it. That is on for number 627 and 628. And then 629 um, is the whole world is waiting on me. Okay. And those were all made within a few minutes of each other based on that time stamp, correct? Yes, within three minutes. All right. And so if you go up further up that page, we will talk about 619, 620, and 621. These were also on November the 17th of 2020. Um, all at 1034, a few seconds apart, and all three entries or searches are the whole world is programming me. Okay. All right. And then we'll skip over the ones that are the searches of the baby that we were talking about, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, the page 52. And you would agree with me that these searches from November 22nd of 2020 are about uh, what you referenced earlier about um, the married man and that kind of thing, her searches related to that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. <coughs> All right, I'm going to direct your attention to page 44. Five, starting at um, 482, going down through 490. Now, 
The way I understand this report, Ms. Jarrett, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that when you are searching, when you plug something in to search it, it can search across multiple applications and that kind of thing. So just because there's multiple entries, it's the device utilizing all its available areas that it can find the information, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. So um, on with 482 to 490, can you indicate um, what on November 23rd of 2020, um, Miss Driver's search was? Home Anchorage, Instagram, Ali, Alma, Gabriella, Cock and Doll. Okay, and you know from your work on this case that the, uh, the Miss Kuykendall has, goes by, had previously gone by the other name of Oma, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, so we are going to go to 41. And these are from November 24th of 2020. Uh, you would agree that the search has included not having enough and having too much at the same time live without newness, reliving the same day, everyone is the oneness except me. You'd agree that that's what's reflected in your report? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Page 40, same date, November 24th, talk, uh, search about the Truman Show ruined my life, history repeating itself, and the life is infinite shattering. Yes, ma'am. Okay. to 39 similar searches my life is being made for me and doesn't exist outside of me that's kind of what the gist of that entry or those that page is about yes ma'am okay um, page 38 November 24th 2020 world is against me there is no escape yes ma'am okay. um, 37 um, these are the ones I think you already talked about, but that's the um, one that says killing somebody to save them and the world is fake. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that, uh, there's also a, no a notation on that same day um, for a search about forced to live. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The um, 34... We will start with um, 370 and 371. Uh, those entries are at 9.44 a.m. The whole world is watching and reacting to me. Yes, ma'am. All right, and so at the, then you go up to same date uh, at 11.28.53. This is number 361, getting a passport or getting a passport during COVID. You would agree with me that that's what those searches were? Yes, ma'am. Days, mm -hmm. just at different times. Yes, ma'am. And then we go back to the birth certificate. We don't need to go back through that. Uh, page 29. Uh, 303. Are the, um, this is November 27th of 2020. Are police with Satan? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, November 26th. What is the punishment for running from sins? I'm sorry, that's number 310? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then there appears to be, we're on page 28, November 27th of 2020, she did a search about schizophrenia. Yes, ma'am. All right, also about what I would assume to be a, like a warrant? Warrant, yes, ma'am. Okay. Just misspelled a couple times? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Um, and then again, um, on November 28th of 2020, which we're now on page 27, there was another search for, on that date around 8.14 p.m. for schi about schizophrenia? Yes, ma'am. All right. And again, there's lots of searches in between these indicating, like, looking for a place to live, uh, stuff related to her baby, that kind of thing, correct? Yes, multiple addresses. Okay. Um, Also on page 19, December 2nd, 2020, uh, train Knoxville. Do you see that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, page 18, number 175, a search on December 2nd, 2020, 
3.02 in the afternoon. I see patterns and mistakes of myself, life infinite breaking. Yes, ma'am. All right, page 13, we're getting there. December 3rd, 2020. I search about I'm evil and don't know how to be nice. Yes, ma'am. All right. Then on the next page, on page 12, the next day, December 4th, there's searches about um, trying to find ways to treat severe diaper rash. Do you see that on page 12? Numbers 111. Yeah, baby red rash on body and face. Yes, ma'am. And then cream for severe diaper rash on baby skin. You would agree with me that aside from the testimony you gave earlier about how to snap a neck in, in uh, on those dates, there were, were aside from those dates, there were not any additional searches related to that leading up to December eighth of twenty twenty outside of the ones you highlighted earlier. Correct. That's correct. All right. So December 4th, December 6th, 7th, 8th, there weren't those kind of searches from the reports that you ran in your uh, review of the, the data from the cell phone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, now we're going to go to page three. And that's that bus ticket one that I asked you about earlier from December 8th, and that's at 12.23 p.m. on the 8th. Yes, ma'am. Okay. There's another search uh, on 12.8 of 2020 at 12.44 about um, going bankrupt or to clear, clear debt. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then the next one um, on there is at 12.47 p.m., and that's the reference to going into the dark for healing. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, and that's the, the end of that, the data on that cell phone with respect to searches, correct? That's correct. All right. All right, I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Any redirect? No, All right. You can step down. Call your next witness, please. State rest, John. All right. Uh, given that, we're going to go ahead and recess for the day. Uh, we're going to ask you to come back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, leave us your notepads. Don't do any research about this case by any means. Don't read any media reports. Don't talk to anybody or let them talk to you. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9. Have a good night.